Hello again, everyone. This is Kyle with Ledger Support, back with another video. This time I wanted to cover a very big topic that's coming up a lot lately with the addition of Polygon into Ledger Live, which is the idea of uh, EVM compatible blockchains. EVM stands for the Ethereum Virtual Machine. And when I say a blockchain is EVM compatible, that means it implements the, ex the same instruction sets. It talks the same language as the Ethereum network. And what this means for developers is that when you develop some code for Ethereum, you can take that same code and you can move it to any other EVM compatible blockchain without changing the code at all, which is very friendly for developers. If you've, if you've already made Uniswap once, don't redesign the code, just deploy Uniswap onto another network like Polygon, like Binance Smart Chain, like Avalanche, like Phantom, Arbitrum. These are all examples of EVM compatible blockchains, which uh, it, it, as a user, this has a certain level of familiarity to it. You start seeing these protocols that you already understand, you already know. You're used to seeing SushiSwap, and you can find it on all the networks that support SushiSwap. They're all, it's just, they just deploy to Harmony and to Optimism and Avalanche and whatever. Uh, so it can seem too easy in a way, and you don't sort of realize what's going on. What's going on is that these are these are two separate networks. These are truly separate blockchains. Ethereum and Polygon, and whenever I say Polygon, just think I'm saying if you're if you're coming in with like the mindset of Binance Smart Chain, just when I say Polygon, just map it in your mind to, to BSC because it's the same idea. Um, Ethereum and Polygon are two separate blockchains. Uh, assets exist on one or the other. Uh, when you when you execute a, a transaction to the blockchain, you're telling one of them, you're telling whichever one you're interacting with what you're doing. You have to choose which blockchain you're using whenever you go to send a transaction. The things that make this a little bit confusing though is that your address on Ethereum is the same number as your address on Polygon, which is the same number as your address on BSC, on Avalanche, on Phantom, etc. It's because they all use the same derivation path that gets you from seed phrase to address one, from seed phrase to address two. It's the same math that they run, which is very nice for users because as a user, you can make a mistake and send money to yourself on the wrong network. And since you own the address on all of the networks, you can, re you can remedy that problem. You can just, oh, I, oops, I sent it to myself on the wrong network. Let me go to that network and send it back or send it around. Uh, so it's it's friendly to users in a way to have the same address on multiple networks, but it also creates some confusing situations, especially when it comes time to interacting with exchanges like Coinbase. What, what you often do, and what this comes up often since we've added Polygon support into Ledger Live, a user will go to their Polygon account and copy their address out, go paste the address into something like Coinbase and say like, Coinbase, please send me Matic, which is the token for Polygon. Matic is to Polygon what Ether is to Ethereum. It's like the base currency for the network. What they'll do is they'll take their address from the Polygon account, paste it into, into Coinbase and say, send me 10 Matic, go. And they'll sit there with their Polygon account open, waiting for the funds to arrive and it will never arrive. The, the reason is because Coinbase doesn't do a good job at actually telling you what's going on, but they're actually sending that money to you, that, that Matic to you on the Ethereum network. Uh, they use the ERC-20 version of the Matic token and they send that to you on the Ethereum network. So when, you're, when you expected it to show up on the Polygon network and you're refreshing that account, what actually happens is they send it on the other network and you, you should have been looking there for Matic to show up on that account, which can be really annoying. Um, because it's the Ethereum network right now, fees are really high and it will cost you money to remedy that problem somehow, either sending it back to Coinbase or or bridging it. Bridging is the idea of sending a token from one of these networks to another, is the concept of bridging. Um, but some exchanges do a better job at telling you what's going on. I, I think Binance is one of them, where if you say, I wanna send Matic from my Binance account to my ledger, address, it'll ask you, which network do you want to send the token on? And you can pick Ethereum, you can pick BSC, you can pick Polygon. They do a better job at letting you decide which network you'd like to use. But if this is the first time you're, in, you're interacting with this concept, just know that you need to start thinking about which blockchain you're on.
when you start talking about tokens. So you no longer want to say, I have USDC. What you need to say is, I have USDC on Ethereum. I have USDC on Polygon. I have USDC on Binance Smart Chain. You see where I'm going with that? It's like the token is not enough to identify where your money is anymore. It's token on blockchain is a is a more complete way to say that. And, and then you can use a bridge to go like, well, I have USDC on Binance Smart Chain and I want to move it to Polygon. And so you need to find a BSC to Polygon bridge out there somewhere that lets you transfer that USDC from one to the other. Okay, I hope that covered the concepts well. There are two things to know. One of them is you have the same address on all of these networks. And when you're interacting with tokens, you need to know which network you're interacting with. Those were those are the two places where the, the confusion lies. And just knowing that is enough to get most people uh, out of the predicament they're in. Now, I want to actually show you more practically how to go about using these networks, because if you are uh, familiar with MetaMask or you just set up MetaMask by watching uh, the previous video of mine, you'll be in a situation where you're one step away from being able to use these other networks. And I, it would be a shame for me to not show you how to do that. So let me switch the view here. OK, so I mentioned this before, but I just want to say it again. Whenever you're using MetaMask with a ledger, all you need to do is have the ledger open, unlocked, and the Ethereum app open. The, the Ethereum app does all of the interactions that MetaMask needs from your ledger. And so you can go do all of the stuff on all these other networks with the Ethereum app just open and ready. And if you haven't already, go into the settings and turn on blind signing because inevitably we will encounter a blind sign pretty quickly into this process. So make sure that's on. I covered that in a previous video, but just just adding it for, for thoroughness. OK, and now you're wondering, why am I on SushiSwap, of all things? SushiSwap's just a place you can go exchange one currency for another. But I, I call this, this is like my pro move for adding additional networks to your MetaMask. When you set up MetaMask right from the beginning, you end up with just one network here, Ethereum mainnet. There's a lot of space here, and you're like, what do I do? And when you go look up tutorials for how to add Polygon, it will say, go to here, click Add Network. It'll pop open this thing that you want to type a bunch of stuff and RPC URLs, and you're like, blah, whatever. I don't want to do that. And, uh, turns out that SushiSwap has a really cool way to uh, inject the network into MetaMask. So if you click here in this little uh, Ethereum icon, it'll pop open a list of all EVM compatible networks that happen to have SushiSwap deployed on it. And from here, by clicking it, it will attempt to change the network, which means that MetaMask will pop up saying, hey, app.sushi.com wants to add Polygon to your, to your MetaMask. And I'll click Approve, Switch. And suddenly, check this out. I have, I'm on the, the Polygon network, if you see that SushiSwap icon. And now I have forever, like permanently in my MetaMask here, I have the ability to pick Polygon as a network. Um, so I have Ethereum, Polygon. And I when I first found this, I was like a kid in a candy store here. I'm like, oh, yes, Avalanche. Amazing. OK, let's add Avalanche to, to SushiSwap or add Avalanche to MetaMask, I mean. Approve, switch, sure. Uh, Phantom, I've heard of that. That's cool. Let's go to Phantom. Uh, SushiSwap wants to add Phantom. Sounds good. Switch. And now look, at, look how loaded I am. My MetaMask account or my MetaMask extension here has Ethereum, Phantom, Avalanche, Matic, which is Polygon. And I can just switch freely between them. And I can I can go to other websites too. I'm not like stuck on SushiSwap for, or anything like that. And just to illustrate the point I had earlier, that address 0x315 doesn't change depending on which network I'm on. I am address 0x315 on Ethereum. I'm 315 on Polygon. Uh, let's add BSC because that's a really popular one too. BSC. There you go. So yeah, and I am also, just for thoroughness as well, I'm also 0x315 on Binance Smart Chain. So there you go. Like This is all it takes to get from the end of that how to set up MetaMask with Ledger video to how do I use Polygon with MetaMask and Ledger? How do I use BSC with MetaMask and Ledger? You just get 
get it set up where you have a bunch of networks in your MetaMask network picker, and you can use that account across all these different networks. And I definitely recommend giving, giving it a shot, especially with something like Polygon, where you'll find all of the big DeFi protocols have deployed their code. So if you wanted to go play around with DeFi and learn how Aave works or learn how Uniswap V3 works and don't have the not enough money where spending $47 per transaction makes sense, which I think is the majority of us, uh, do those do all that learning you want to do over on Polygon where it works the same. So for learning purposes, it's great because it works exactly the same as it does with Ethereum, but the transactions cost you fractions of a penny. So feel free to go to Aave and put up a dollar worth of collateral and borrow 15 cents worth of, of uh, wrapped Bitcoin and then pay back your loan and about, get your collateral back out and do all that stuff that you've been hearing about or thinking about doing in a situation where it's pain free. You just want to use transactions that are, are super cheap. Um, that's the best way to learn is by doing, and there's no way to learn by doing anymore on Ethereum. It's just too expensive. So um, yeah, give it a try. Let me know how it goes. And if you have any questions, uh, you can always ask them in the comments, but better yet, I'm uh, on Reddit, on the Ledger Wallet subreddit. So come find me there and ask your question, and I will probably see it um, pretty active all the time there. So come find me. All right. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you later.